Okay, hi everybody. This is a video lecture uh, for first year maths for managers, um, first year part time business maths one. Um, and let's have a look at uh, what we're doing here. Okay, so this is it's in the probability section, although I don't really consider this to be probability yet. Um, this is called permutation and combination, or permutations. Permutations and combinations. Okay, so uh, what is a permutation? What is a combination? Well, let me just reach for a prop here. Okay, so um, uh, this is a deck of cards. I will uh, make use of this when I'm explaining an example in a little while. Okay, um, a permutation is a rearrangement of some set. Uh, where order matters. Okay. On the other hand, a combination is a selection of a smaller group from a bigger group where order is irrelevant. Okay. So, um, let me uh, let me give you an example here. Suppose I take um, a pretty simple word. Okay. Um, I'm going to choose a, a simple word. Um, word I'm going to pick is cat. Why? Because it's a three-letter word, okay, and three-letter words are short, okay. So it's three letters. Okay, and if we asked ourselves in how many ways can they be rearranged with no repetitions, um, Any permutations? Okay. How many permutations are there? Well, it, it's pretty simple. Okay, I have three choices for my first letter. Okay. Then I have only two choices for my second letter. And then I would have only one choice for my last letter. So there are three ways that I can choose my first letter, after which I will have two ways to choose my second letter. And finally, one way to choose my final letter. And since it doesn't, um, uh, so if I'm counting this, um, I would have three ways for the first, two ways for the second, and then the last one would be forced by itself. And I, as, a, as a result, I can only have six possible ways of doing this. That's six possible ways. And we can actually list them. It's not too difficult. There's all of the ones that begin with C. There is CAT, and there is CTA, all right? Okay, those are the only uh, two that begin with the C, okay? Then I have um, the, the ones that begin with A. There would be ACT, ATC, and then I would have the ones that begin with T, which would be TAC and TCA. And of course, we can see that there is a total of six there. Okay. So that's the basic idea of a permutation. It's how many ways can I uh, rearrange something where order matters. Okay. So let's have a slightly more complicated question. Okay. Let's say I suppose uh, suppose I decided to take um, suppose I did decided to take a longer word. Let's take the word. Um, Let's take my name. Okay. Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S, no repeated letters, which is good because that's one of the reasons I chose it. So there's six unique letters. Okay. There are six unique letters. Okay, and let's ask ourselves a, a slightly different question. Okay, instead of asking 
how many possible, well actually let's start with that, let's start with the number of total arrangements. What's the number of permutations? Well, I have six choices for my first letter, five for my second, four for my third, three for my fourth, two for the fifth, and then there's only one choice for the last letter. Six by five is 30, by four uh, is um, 120, uh, by three, and you can see that these numbers actually end up getting quite large quite fast, okay? So in fact, I'll, I'll show you this on a calculator. Six by five by four by three by two by one. That ends up as a total of 720. It's quite a large number. Okay. Well, let's uh, now ask ourselves a slightly different question. Let's say, what if uh, instead of wanting to choose all six letters and giving them some order, suppose I wanted to choose a smaller number uh, of letters from uh, my name. Okay, so instead of choosing six letters, maybe I'm choosing three, and I want to know how many different ways that can be done. Okay. Okay, so let's say I want to... Suppose I want to choose, let's say four letters. No, three, we'll go with three. No, actually we won't, we'll go with four. Choose four letters. in such a way that order matters. In such a manner that order matters. And let's say we have a question, how many ways can that be done? Okay, how many ways can that be done? Well, it's uh, it's not too difficult if you think about it, right? Um, let me turn this page here. Okay, so it's it's fairly straightforward. Okay, there are six letters in my name. I want to choose four of them. Well, how many choices do I have for my first letter? Okay, well, I have six choices for the first letter. Okay. Then I have five choices for the second letter. Then I would have four choices for the third letter. And finally, three choices for the fourth letter. Okay, so six by five by four by three. Okay, and that's a smaller number, obviously. Okay, so six by five by four by three, that's a total of 360. Okay, and this is still, um, you know, quite a large number. Okay, and of course, if I have more numbers to choose from, if my name was longer, uh, if I had a long name like Elizabeth or Cornelius or something like that, then Maybe uh, maybe the number would be much bigger, but for my name, which only has six letters, it's still quite a large number, okay? Now, um, we'd like ways of writing this um, which uh, are, are not so dependent on the example and can kind of um, work for any size that I might begin with. So this is where I'm going to introduce something called a factorial. Okay, what is a factorial? And we say that n factorial is equal to what? It's n multiplied by n minus 1 all the way down to by 2 by 1. Okay, um, so as an example, If I chose 5 factorial, 
that would be equal to 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1. 1 by 2 is 2, by 3 makes 6, by 4 makes 24, by 5 makes 120. So that's 120. Okay. So uh, that's 5 factorial. The only one that's a little bit funny, which um, it depends on the formal definition of this. This is not a formal definition. This works for every number which is bigger than 1, but um, it's not quite the formal definition. Um, Zero factorial is defined as being equal to one. Okay. Uh, so that's um, that's how it works. And actually, I'll give you the formal definition. Uh, it's a recursive definition. Zero factorial is defined as being equal to one, and then n factorial is defined as being equal to n times n minus one factorial. Okay. Uh, so. How would that work? Well, then 1 factorial would be 1 times 0 factorial, which would be 1 times 1. 2 factorial would be 2 times 1 factorial, and so on. Don't worry so much about this, but just be aware that if you see a 0 factorial, you want to be a little bit careful with it. Okay? But this will work for almost everything that we're interested in. Okay? Now let me move on here. Okay. So that's what n factorial is. What does it represent? So n factorial represents Let me turn on the light here. It's just getting a bit dim. I hope that's a little bit better. So n factorial represents the number of ways uh, of permutations of n many unique symbols. And they do have to be unique, um, because obviously if I had two symbols that were the same, it wouldn't matter which one went where. So for example, if my name was uh, Peter, Peter has two E's in it, okay? Um, well, in that case, then the E's are interchangeable with each other, and we'll have to talk about that in a little while. For the moment, let's just talk about uh, unique symbols, okay? So... Um, that goes back to the idea here of, say, Thomas has six letters, six by five, by four, by three, by two, by one. That's the number of possible arrangements um, of the letters in my name, okay? Now, also, return to the previous example. What did we have in the previous example? Okay, we had that... Um, Four letters from Thomas, what did we have? We had six by five by four by three, and this is equal to six by five by four by three by two by one, and dividing by two times one. Okay, what's this equal to? This is equal to 6 factorial over 2 factorial, okay? And this is equal to 6 factorial over uh, 6 minus 4 factorial, okay? So 
uh, if we wanted to find the number of permutations on any uh, sequence of letters, this would uh, absolutely work. Okay, so let's say I have, suppose we have Let's say uh, 10 symbols. Say I have 10 distinct symbols, okay? So there's no, rep no repeated symbols, no, uh, they're all unique, okay? And we want to uh, choose Um, let's say three in a way, such a way that order matters. Okay. Well, then I would have ten by nine by eight. Okay, 10 choices for my first, nine choices for my second, and three choices, uh, sorry, eight choices for my third. Okay, this would be the same thing as 10 by 9, by 8, by 7, by 6, by 5, by 4, by 3, by 2, by 1, divided by the tail part, the, the 7 part. 7 by 6, by 5, by 4 by three, by two, by one. That's 10 factorial over seven factorial, which is the same as 10 factorial. And then I have 10 minus seven factorial, okay? And this has a special name. This is called 10 permute Three. So what does this mean? This means that I have ten things and I want to permute three of them. Okay. And that is something that you will find on a calculator. Okay. Let me show you here. Okay. So um, the general formula first for n permute or what's n permute or? That's where I have n many things, and I want to take or many and permute them. So that would be n factorial, and then I would have n minus or subtraction, and then factorial. And actually, I don't need to do this um, even at this level, okay? I don't even need to go and do that. And the reason is because calculators have this function. Uh, if you can see here, it's this one here, n, p, or, okay? So what do I do, okay? In this case, 10, I hit my second function. It says 10, p, and now I'm going to choose my, uh, my three here, which was my or, and that's gonna give me 720. Uh, 10 times nine is 90, 90 multiplied by eight is in fact 720. So, Okay, 720. Okay, um, but this works for, for bigger numbers too. Okay, let's say I, I have uh, 15 and I want to per permute, well, let's say six of them. Okay, well, it will come up there. It's a huge number. You can see that it's 360, 3600. Okay, so um, this is how we're going to calculate the number of ways that something can be permuted is using this, this method here. Okay. So that's permutations, um, and it's relatively straightforward if you understand how the formula works, okay? Uh, why did I grab a deck of cards, okay? So uh, you're all familiar, I think, with a deck of cards. There are 52 uh, cards in a deck, and um, in how many ways can they be rearranged, okay?
Okay, how many possible orders are there for a deck of cards? Well, there are 52 cards, okay. Okay, and I would want to find the order for all of them, okay, which in this case goes back to the simple version, okay, like uh, when, when I did my name, okay, uh, directly, 6 by 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1, in this case, that's going to be 52 factorial, which is 52 by um, 51, all the way down to by 2 by 1. And this is a huge number, okay? So let me just do this on a calculator for you here, 52. And factorials are also a function that I can get on my calculator. It's this exclamation mark here. I hope you can see that. So I'm going to hit second function. I get the exclamation point. And that number is 8 by 10 to the 67. Okay, 8 by 10 to the 67. Okay, which is an 8 followed by 67 zeros. Okay, 8 by 67 zeros. Okay, and that is uh, an enormous number. Okay, that is um, uh, astronomically large. Okay, you could shuffle uh, a deck of cards from now until the end of time and you would never expect to get the same order twice. Okay, um, so very, very important. What if, uh, on the other hand, of uh, not looking at the full deck, I was only looking at a selection of five cards? Five cards. Okay. Well, then, instead of having the full deck, I would have 52, and I would be choosing... Sorry, not choosing, permuting. Uh, let's do that again. 52, permuting five of them, okay, which would be what? That would be 52 factorial on top, and then I would have 52 minus five factorial on the bottom. However, I am not going to do this, okay? Why would I not do that, okay? The reason it's not a good idea to do this is because 52 factorial will not come up on a calculator as an actual number. It will come up in scientific notation. Okay, so I do not want to do these two separately. I would much rather um, just be aware of the fact that what I have is going to be 52 choices for the first, 51 for the second, 50 for the third, 49 and then 48, okay? And I can get that on my calculator either by multiplying this string out here or I can say 52 permute five and it will give me the answer immediately and it is huge, okay? Um, and we'll see there that that's, if I divide that by 52 and then divide it by 51 and then divide it by 50, and then divide it by 49, uh, and then divide it by 48, I get one. Okay, so that's a huge number. Um, 52 per minute five, absolutely enormous number. 3118, 75200, okay? Very, very big number, okay? So when we're talking about orders of things, um, because order matters, it's very, uh, we end up with very, very large numbers, okay? And that's the idea of permutations, okay? Um, that basically covers everything except what we would do if um, we had a repeated letter, okay? Okay, so let's choose a, an example here. Let's say that my um, let's say that my name is Peter. Okay, it's not, but okay. Peter has 
one, two, three, four, five letters, but two of them are repeated. Okay, so in how many ways can, uh, can this be done? Okay, well, it, it's pretty straightforward. If the number of possible arrangements of five letters Uh, the total number of permutations what is it? it's going to be uh, 5 factorial and I've got 5, way five letters of choosing my uh, ways to choose my first letter then 4, then 3, then 2, then 1 Okay, however, okay, that would be the total number of arrangements, okay, but two of the symbols are actually the same. So if I had imagined that this E was somehow different to this E, then I would have this many here. But these two are actually uh, interchangeable. So it doesn't matter what order the two E's are, so I have to correct for the order of the two E's, and that's two factorial. Okay, which is 5 factorial over 2 factorial, which is 120 over 2, which is 60. Okay, so there are 60 possible arrangements of the uh, letters in the name Peter because both of the E's are interchangeable. Okay, whereas if your name was uh, Marie, for example, which has five letters, but none of them are the same, you would have 120. Okay. Um, let's choose another uh, word here, which is a little bit more... Uh, let's choose the word. Hollow. I think I'm spelling hollow right. Oh, I'm. I'm uh, yeah, I'm spelling it fine. Okay. So what does hollow have? It has six letters. Okay. It has two O's. And it has two L's. Okay, so the total would be uh, uh, the number of total permutations is then I would have 6 factorial, which is the number of possible ways of arranging 6 things. However, the two O's need to be corrected for. That gives me a 2 factorial. And the two L's need to be corrected for, which gives me another 2 factorial. doesn't matter what order they're in. So I would end up with 6 factorial with 720 divided by 4. And that's 180. 180 possible arrangements. Um, 2 factorial is 2 in both cases. So that's a, an example where I have repeated letters. We're not going to worry too much about that. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop there and then we'll continue with combinations which are the next topic.